In this presentation, we will take a look at an overview of the financial statement auditing process. First, we'll take a look at the activities of management, and then we'll take a look and compare and contrast the activity of the audit or the activities performed within the audit. You'll recall that management, of course, is responsible for compiling the information into financial statements, that being the thing that we as the auditors are then gonna go in and audit, see if it is in compliance, is in conformity, with a set of principles that it should be constructed in accordance with those typically being gap or generally uh, accepted accounting principles so management implements internal controls now note internal controls are going to be a huge topic when we think about audit oftentimes especially when we're thinking about a smaller type of company we often want to go in and we just say i want to just jump right in there and take a look at the balance sheet give me the balance sheet and i'm just going to dig in start testing things out there was a time period where that basically is more similar to what we used to do. We used to say, hey, you know, give us the balance sheet. We're going to go in and we're going to start digging in and testing things out. As we start looking at larger companies, however, the larger the company is, the more internal controls we're going to need. We're going to need a system that's going to be set up. And you can think of this similar to as a system set up for, say, a government that's very large, where you have the checks and balances. That's, in essence, what internal controls are. The larger the company the more internal checks and balances that need to be in place and the more we need to rely on them both in the construction of the accounting system and the business system as well as within the auditing process so more and more with the growing size of companies they are becoming more reliant on internal controls and we as the auditor if we want to have a, an accurate audit in a time frame that's reasonable must also look into these internal controls, uh, especially when we're talking about larger companies. Now, if you're talking about small companies, note that the internal controls are going to be less because you need less internal controls with when we're talking about a smaller type of company. And we as the auditor then, seeing that there are less internal controls, will will make adjustments for that if that's the case as well and do more testing of them. But really key, really important are the internal controls. Then the management is going to have the uh, conducts the actual transactions, the financial transactions that are going to happen. The year is going to go by. They're going to have financial transactions all year long. They're going to conduct those and they're going to record and compile the information. Debits and credits are going to be recorded here to compile the, uh, the information, accumulate transactions into account balances. They're, of course, going to take that. We can imagine this is what the company's doing. This is general ledger accounting. The company, the management responsible for this, taking those transactions, compiling them into balances, say a trial balance. We can imagine trial balance being put together. Then they're going to take that information and prepare financial statements, which, of course, is the end result that they would then be processing and use. If we're talking about a publicly traded company, they're required to have the financial statements that are going to be put together. If they're not publicly traded, they want them for internal use and possibly... For, to get a loan or something like that. So the end result representing what is, something has been done in terms of financial accounting, according to generally accepted accounting principles are of course 